So today I go, uh, I want to show you what I've read in the month of um, and I read that for the interstellar book, for the, it, people singing outside. Hi there again booktube, Leanne here and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So today I want to show you what I read in the month of September. So I haven't actually read a wonderful amount of books this past month because the books that I have read have been, some of them have been kind of chunky or more difficult to read I guess. So I'm going to hit screen record on my tablet and as I did last month I'm going to show you my journal spreads so you can see kind of a little bit of artistic Pinterest <laughs> talent of putting my little spreads together um, because I just like to show them off because I put time into them so I just thought it'd be nice to incorporate them into my reading wrap-ups so I will show you my spreads and tell you what I thought of the books I read so I'll hit screen record and show you what I have read this month so here you can see this is the um, thing you saw in the thumbnail this is just my um, little cover page for September um, and I put this little thing together and it's got like um, bits of washi tape and just little images and then like a back piece and I wrote September across the middle that's all that is really so and then I will scroll across here and this was my TBR for September this is these are the books that came up in my TBR game so giving you a little overview on what's going on in my TBR and my journal. We've got Traitors of the Black Crown, which is by Kate Pierce, which is a arc I got on NetGalley and that was to be read by the 22nd of September. And I did, I read that and um, I'll tell you more thoughts on it in a bit. I'm just going over what I actually read so far. So then I also read Fresh Water by Akweki Amazi. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, so don't quote me on that. Um, I read that for the Faith in the Gays Boot Club and it uh, was my LGBTQ plus rep for, for my prompt last month. So then um, I also read Dune by Frank Herbert. I read that with the Interstellar Boot Club. We had a live show only yesterday at the point I'm recording this. <laughs> um, and that was also my prompt of Blue on the cover. And then my one of my other prompts was a read with a buddy read with shelf space and this was a book with grey on the cover i didn't read this book i picked it up and i tried for a few chapters and i don't think i'm just i just don't think right now is the time to read it it seems like a good story and everything but it's just not for right now for me so i had to put that one down unfortunately uh the once and future witches by oh and witches steeped in gold was by sian and smart the Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow was sent to be my net galley. Um, it was to read a book with and in the title. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to get to this one either. When I looked up, this book's actually been out for about a year and I I wasn't sure whether the people online who were reading it were reading it as arts like I'd been sent or if they'd bought it, but clearly they'd bought it. <laughs> Um, I think I got sent the arc because it's coming out in paperback on the 7th of October but I've told them I can't read it by that time so I'm just going to read it whenever I want I'll probably get the book instead of reading the arc because I don't know the arc copy of it looks a bit odd on my tablet and I don't know if it's finished like a finished copy or not so I think I'd rather just get the book now that it's out anyway um, at some point <laughs> um, so I'm pushing that off for another time. I also, I did read The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien and I read this with Kate's Discord as well as like a couple of the Discords, like everybody's reading Lord of the Rings at the same time at the moment. I don't know what's going on there but I'm part of it apparently. <laughs> and I, this was to read a book with chapter titles and yeah, I read that so that's all good. And the last one was to read The Great Hunt by Robert Jordan and this is part of Greg Reeler Purchase Discord and this was my prompt for MGTBR. I am still reading this and I am confident that I'll read it by the end of the month because yeah I'm about a quarter of the way through it and I'm going to power through it over the next 
like half a week or so so yeah I'm, I'm definitely gonna finish this i'm quite confident that it'll be done by the end of the month so that was only two of those that i haven't read but i did add a different book which we'll get to in a bit so let's go into more detail on what i thought so this is my first page and this is for traitors of the black crown by kate pierce i rated this a three and a half stars um it kept me gripped and the characters were pretty cool but i felt like i only cared about the perspective of the two main female leads uh, well they're all female leads for mine about but i think i only cared about the knight and the um duchess i only really cared about their side of the story when it went to the side of the kingdom which yeah sure that's like the place we're following and everything but when it went from the queen's perspective i didn't find myself caring much until like towards the end of the book um and i know it's important to like what the story is but it wasn't gripping me very much i felt like i just kept wanting to go back to the main story with the um with the knight and the duchess so yeah that was my main care about that so the traitor to the black crown or traitors of the black crown sorry is about um a knight who's actually a woman disguised as a man so that she can be a knight um when she's a knight she's known as Rowan when she's not when she's just herself her name's Raina if I'm pronouncing that right I think it's Raina um and yeah it, she's disguised as a knight because the queen killed all of her family or, or had them killed in some way and she managed to go into hiding and escape and it's basically about her trying to keep her secret um and being banished from the kingdom and still in disguise this is um and basically her trying to find her place and it's like a bit of a love story it's got lgbt content in it and i thought it was quite good i enjoyed that it was just there were bits of it that just weren't gripping me the, the like i say the side with the queen wasn't gripping me enough and I felt like it fell flat and went a bit slow in a few places um, and I know it's just like a debut novel and all that kind of stuff so it, it might not be wonderful but I, I mean I'd still recommend it to people who might like this plot um, it intrigued me, it, I read the whole thing which if I don't like something I tend to drop unless it's like for a book club or something <laughs> um, but yeah i quite liked it three and a half stars isn't terrible for me it still means i enjoyed it i might read the second one at some point um i might get because i i did like the story and i like the characters but like i said it just fell flat here and there and um i kept losing interest every now and again and then coming back to it and getting back into it again so it is just that kind of hit and miss kind of situation when you're reading a book like you kind of have to make yourself pick it back up sometimes which isn't wonderful but it's not terrible <laughs> so moving on from that um like i say three and a half stars i then moved on to the hobbit and i loved the hobbit i gave it five stars i also came to a realization when i read the hobbit like after i finished it i was thinking about it and i was like are there any women in this book think about it there aren't any women in this book the only women that are mentioned are like the townspeople but not by name and there's like references to bilbo's mum that's it there's no women in this book i did not even know this it's something i didn't even ever think about and my brain just picked up on it when i was thinking about the book and i was like oh my goodness yeah, at least with The Lord of the Rings, there are women, even though they aren't the main characters. <laughs> um, but that was a realisation I came to. I did still rate this five stars because the story was fantastic. I was gripped every single moment and I couldn't put this book down from start to finish. I was reading it as part of the Lord of the Rings read along and we had like dates set throughout the month. So we were supposed to read it throughout the entire month. I couldn't 
I just had to wait to share my thoughts because I just, I was so ahead. I just wanted to speed through this book because it's just so good and I couldn't put it down. Um, I loved the, the, the my favourite chapter of this book was the Gollum chapter. I'm not going to say much because of spoilers and I know everybody knows this story, but the, there might be a few people out there who don't. But I loved the Gollum chapter. It was fantastic and I loved the Smaug chapter. Just going to say that fantastic there's dragons there's um there's uh, like trolls that's it i was gonna say ogres then there's trolls there's goblins it's just so fun and i just i love this story so it was so so good so moving on from there i read freshwater by akwaki amersi and i rated it four stars i don't tend to like contemporary very much um, and I rated this because I rated this a four stars because it is a very important, very emotional story, and I think it's very um, it can be very close to some people's um, experiences and hearts, depending on like their their own feelings and beliefs and everything. Um, it was it was a very very good story. It did keep me gripped, even though I don't tend to like contemporary and. It's about a girl who, um, when she was born, uh, she was born with like these gods just in her head, and these these people born that way tend to die in infancy. But this main character that we have didn't, and so the main character doesn't call like herself a she or whatever. Um, they call themselves we because there's not just the one person in the body there's also like these gods from like the other side and they're supposed to want the person to die but this one of the personas like she wants her to live so that she can have all these human experiences and stuff and there's a lot of emotional subjects in this book there's lots of like trick that like you should absolutely definitely read up on the trigger warnings if you're going to read this book because it can like if you have some of these similar experiences it might just like really get to you um so the for example there's um trans issues raised in this book so um like the main character is trans in like i suppose a few different ways but one of like one of the gods in her head or whatever they are i'm not absolutely certain one of them's female and one of them's male and so the main character kind of switches around a lot and I suppose they're more like a they, they them instead of a he or she or whatever um because it kind of it does like really affect the main character's persona by who's in her head and what they're doing so it kind of changes who they are quite a bit um there's like child abuse, infant death. There's so many trigger warnings that you, you should absolutely look them up if you're going to read this book because if you're triggered, then it does hit hard, this book does. So I would absolutely warn you about that. But it, it handles the all of these topics, I think. Like, obviously, I haven't experienced these things, but from what I know, um, I think it handles them quite well. Um, but yeah, absolutely, you you should look at the trigger warnings because, I mean, I are upset and I haven't even experienced most of these things, so yeah, definitely putting that out there to you. So yeah, I rated this book quite high, even though I don't really tend to like contemporary that much, so that says a lot about the book. I'm going to move on from there to say that I read Doom. As you can see... <laughs> up in the corner I rated this a two star I know that not many people will agree with me um I kind of wanted to rate it lower but the story itself was quite cool the actual like environment and the idea of Dune was so cool to me and I I went into this thinking it was a five star prediction but I was so wrong I was so, so very, very wrong. This book handles 
so many things, especially, well, there isn't even, like, feminism in this book. Like, the, the women in this book portray as being such strong, powerful women, but then they're not. Like, they bow to the men in this book as if they're not important anymore. Like, the, the Bene Gesserit, I think, are women mostly, and they are so powerful and they've got all this power. But they still bow to the men that are in their lives or in power. And it's so frustrating because the women in this book have so much potential. Like, so much potential. And it's infuriating that they don't get to use... Like, the, the potential isn't used for them. They're just... When you think, when you think they're gaining that power and get and being really cool, powerful women, it's snatched away from them and they accept it and it just... It doesn't sit well with me at all. And I'm not even going to get started on the Baron. Don't even get me started on the Baron. There's just absolutely everything wrong with that man. I felt physically sick, especially at the end of his chapters. It just was not needed at all. It just wasn't. I'm still wanting to watch the movie because the movie, hopefully... <laughs> doesn't do all these really cringy bad things that the book did. <laughs> um, and I'm looking forward to this story hopefully done well and so that I actually like it this time around. So I'm, I'm really, really hoping for a great movie. I mean, the casting of it is fantastic <laughs> and the way it looks, the trailer looks amazing. Um, and so I'm, I'm really, really hoping for the story this could have been without all the problematic stuff <laughs> because there was so much potential in this book and I feel like a lot of that was ruined by all the problematic stuff and I know, I know it was written in the 60s but some of this was just inexcusable and I'm sure Frank Herbert was just thinking how can I make the Baron the worst villain in the entire world yeah, he made him very hateable but to the point where I don't even want to read his chapters because they're so bad. Because he's such a bad, horrible character. There's no redeemable qualities in that man. Anyway, moving on. Because I'm not going to keep going on about this much longer. Because I'll be here all day. Yeah. <laughs> so, the one I haven't mentioned yet is Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. I thought this book was amazing. I gave it a four and a half stars. I love the whimsy of this book. It was just wonderful and I loved it. It had it was so whimsical and lovely and the main character is a princess and she gets cursed. Reading a few books of curses in lately. I read Hell's Moving Castle last night. Anyway, <laughs> um, she gets cursed and she isn't allowed to speak anymore. And I had this like really weird empathy where when I was reading the book, I felt like I wasn't allowed to talk. <laughs> yeah, so every time like I came out of the book and put it down to go and do something else, I found myself acting like I couldn't talk or wasn't allowed to until I realised I wasn't the character in the book. <laughs> That's really bad. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it has never happened to me before and it was so strange. It probably didn't help that I had a sore throat, so it helped not talking. <laughs> but I was like, if I talk, somebody's gonna die. <laughs> That's never happened. I couldn't believe it. I, I couldn't, honestly. But yeah, she's cursed, so she can't talk. If she does talk, her brothers will die. She's got six brothers. Yeah, she's got six brothers, and but with every word, one of them will die. And that's the curse she's put under. And so she's having to figure out um, where her brothers are for a start because she's been separated from them. And then when she does find them, what's she going to do? How are they going to break the curse? And how are they going to get their lives back? And it's so good. I love this book so much. <laughs> um, so yeah, this, is, this and The Hobbit have been my favourite books this month. I absolutely adored every moment. And... I really hope for the second book of Six Crimson and Cranes because I really, really like where the story's going. There's demons and like demons trapped in a mountain. And you know, 
It's weird how things come together because I went to the cinema to watch the Ten Rings movie, the Marvel movie, um, Chang Shai and the Ten Rings in September. And it, it reminded me, like, that I was reading Six Crimson Cranes, or I started to read it the same day I went to see that movie, and the whole fact that there's a dragon and a lake in both of those things, in this book and in that movie, I was just like, oh my goodness. How am I consuming two pieces of media that are so similar and without even trying or realising? Like, I'd gone out that day to go to the cinema and watch that movie. I'd also been to Waterstones to get a book, which I, did, I didn't know what book I was going to get. And I was like, oh yeah, I'll get, six, I'll get Six Crimson Cranes. It's been something I wanted to read for a long time. Like, it's been something I wanted to read since I saw it. So it's so weird that those two books on the same day, those, those two pieces of media on the same day kind of came together and were kind of similar. So it's weird how these things happen, isn't it? But yeah, I adored, I adored that movie also. It was so good. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I absolutely adore Six Crimson Cranes and I'm excited to see more in this world because it was so great. Did I also mention that her brothers got turned into cranes and that's why they couldn't go back to the palace? Yeah, so her brothers get turned into cranes. That's why it's called Six Crimson Cranes. Um, and by day, they're cranes. And by night... Yeah, by day they're cranes and by night they're human. But nobody recognises them and that's why they can't do much about it. But yeah, that's also part of the premise of the book, if, if you didn't know already. And so, not done a spread on The Great Hunt yet, but here's the cover. <laughs> That's what I'm reading right now. Like I said, I'm I'm a bit into I'm about a quarter of the way through it. I'm really enjoying it. I know this is gonna be um either like a high higher star rating anyway. It's either gonna be three and a half or four. I'm really enjoying it, like carrying on with the story. So I know I've read this before, so I know I liked it. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I'm currently reading. We'll read this by the end of the month, and that's everything. So that's my September reads. I only read like six books, I think. Two, four, six. Yeah, I read six books. So let me know down below what you read in September, what your favourite books were that you read this, this past month, or maybe some books that you want to pick up in October for a spooky season. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for watching another video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you um, have had a good reading month too, and I will see you guys next time. TTFN. Bye!